Good day, YouTube. Um, I decided to keep going today. It's probably five o'clock. And since this step is very simple, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do this. They uh, asking me to uh, install the, uh, the fitting that goes on the turbo. Um, here I have it right in front of me. Uh, trying to take this out of the packet. Put the screws on and get some of that um <clears throat> the thread seal sealing into it and uh make sure it's nice and tight um i'm gonna get that done and um let's see what comes up next yeah what i would like to know is why would you died install this or position this turbo in a way that i can't even put the fitting improperly in there right now it's loose but i had to really like put the fitting in un unscrew it and put take this take the screw out put this fitting back but now you don't even have space to um to put the actual holes in there i mean what i understand is that you lose this stuff up and um you probably can position the turbo better but i don't know if i should do that if i was going to come out of alignment or something uh i need to know what's going on so putting this this fitting on the uh, turbo i had a little inconvenience yesterday uh, which i couldn't continue recording but this morning i went ahead and um, looked at a video how these turbos are assembled and my problem was is that this fitting right here was too much next to the screw right here so it was uh, it was actually not letting me put this holes in there or this fitting in there without having to touch this thing right here this was in the way so i contact soho motorsports and i send them a, a picture of what was going on um unfortunately it was the weekend and they were closed but um after looking at the video how these uh turbos were assembled i was able to figure it out how to move this a little bit out of the way so that it can clear the screw right here um so the first thing the first thing is, uh, that i did just in case you guys run into the same problem i marked my position on, on, on both uh pieces and then i started losing these right here um but not taking them off i did that all around the turbo and then i loosened the, the clamp a little bit and it gave me access to move the middle turbine only that way without having to without by and, and keeping my position on the actual uh turbo or pipe entries um if you guys run into the same problem don't be afraid to do it i know these are uh seal lock tight um you know make sure you guys tighten them up as best as you can when you um when you put them back or you tighten them back um i was able to put my hose there and i was able to tighten it so my problem was resolved um so i'm going to continue with the installation and my step now is to take the fuel rail protection plastic out so I can wrap it in that heat in that heat wrap this is what it looks like so they want you to just take a piece of that breaded hose wrap open it up and and try to get it on there as best as you can you can use some tight straps to hold them but just being precaution that that piece doesn't get burning and then the fuel line gets damaged when you can catch you know it might catch on fire as well so i'm gonna get that done and then after that the next steps are for only automatic transmission which will take us to the piping x see all this stuff is from automatic transmissions you don't you know if you have a manual then you're not supposed to be following those steps um this one probably will be the next step this is both automatic and, and manual they want you to make an indent 
on the chassis around here or here because the uh, the uh, attachment of the tower bolt and the pipe uh, needs to clear so you see it right there that's the indent I want you to do um, so I will probably I will probably see where the turbo ends up on a connection before I make this indent so I know exactly where it's, it's, it's gonna go um, it's best to to measure when the pipes are on but um not tighten so I can actually mark it down and and then make the indention where I know it's supposed to go uh, I can guide you guys as best as I can however um, at the end you guys are the one making the pipes connection and you will know exactly where it goes all right so I will leave it there and continue to uh, to route the uh, I'm sorry to wrap the uh, plastic shield that goes around the uh, fuel lines this is the best that I can come up with um, I just placed one tie strap there but um once I install this piece back and put the fuel lines through here make sure they all go back in their clip um, I'm gonna try to put another tie strap to a hole around here right here and I don't think there will be enough heat that's gonna be hitting this for this tight strap to, to burn because most of my pipes are wrapped in uh, that heat shield strap so they they don't get the right heat from, from an actual pipe so I'm gonna put this back on and see if I can secure the other tight strap and continue with the install hi right, guys continue with the installation here um, I will continue by running the pipes for the turbo. Um, I'm gonna be dealing with this pipe right here. This is gonna come from the bottom. And then this pipe right here, this is gonna go next to the engine on the left hand side on the top. And this piece right here will hook up to uh, a support that's gonna hold it. Um, and then this piece right here is the one on the bottom. This was what hooks up to the um, to the white white pipe on the bottom. This one right here to this right here. So uh, let me show you what I did so far. And it does says that for stage two, you need to uh, lift the engine so you, this pipe can go in there smoothly. But um, I think this miner has changed a lot ever since they got it. I think that from stage one, also you have to lift the engine to get this running properly in there. Um, this is a really tight fit, especially when you wrap these on heat wrap. Um, it's in there, you can't even, you know, you can't even move this. This one is still a little bit adjustable, but um, don't get confused here. Uh, the turbo, um gets hooked up to uh the big part where the turbine is goes here and then the bottom part goes here and the other part sticks the other entry sticks right here for the next pipe that comes up this is really close to the power steering so i'm gonna try to um get it adjusted or installed the best as i can um again this part right here it's the one that goes on the bigger pipe. And then this one right here is the one that goes from the bottom coming up. Um, like I said, it, it's it's a challenge to get these pipes through there. Um, so, you know, if you're doing this as well as I am, you have to lift the engine. Right now the engine is still lift up. And I have to load it down. So that part was already done. I'm gonna continue. Um, I already did wrap this uh, this seal, or should I say, uh, fuel line protection. Um, all the steps after that um, will deal with uh, automatic transmissions, how to uh, round uh, route the uh, hoses. So 
if you have an automatic, you can go ahead and and follow those steps. I don't have an automatic, I have a six speed manual. Um, so I'm skipping all these steps. Um, also, it talks about an indention you have to put, uh, do on a chassis. I don't think that would be necessary anymore. The reason why I mentioned that, um, I haven't gotten there yet, but I think it's not gonna be necessary because this right here has a diff different flank. I think it's a T4 or a T3. And the way it, since it's square, the turbo or rectangular, the uh, T3 connection, it touches the chassis right here. And this is why they want you to do that indention on the, on the chassis metal. But the turbo doesn't have that connection anymore. Um, this is my, my bottom connection. And this is my side connection. None of these have that connection anymore where it's like a, a rectangular connection, a T3 connection. So I'm gonna I'm gonna disregard that and keep going to see if I um, can get it installed with no problem. Um, again, it's telling you to to make sure you're lifting anything up. And it says stage one does not require for the motor to be loosened or raised. Uh, I can beg to differ. I have to raise my up to get it done. Um, so I'm moving to the next step. Um, I'm gonna be connecting. Well, this is just telling you to put the bottom pipe in there, a thing up below, and then the top pipe in there and put the uh, support. My support is already installed. The pipe is nice and tight. And like I said, my bottom pipe is there. Continuing. It's telling you to do the bottom one now. They have this attachment that you have to uh, um, bolt on. And my bottom one is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to get it on and, and bolt it. And I'll be back to show you guys what it looks like. All right, guys, back to this install. Uh, step 142. Um, Dealing with these pipes is going to be a little bit difficult if you're planning to do this. Um, the most difficult part I got from um, putting these pipes right here, it's um, this pipe right here. When you when you put them together, one goes inside the other. This one goes inside this one. So um, and this is just one whole one whole long pipe. But these two, that one, the bottom one and the top piece they are both separate so you cannot put them together while you have them outside you have to put the one on top first and then go on the bottom uh, most likely lift the engine a little bit from the mounts so you can actually clear the one on top to be able to hook up once you get them hooked up you have to make sure you bolt them together. You gotta bolt them together like this. Um, and then you hook them to the support. Um, don't put it on a support uh, first, you will not be able to get it done. Um, screwing this in is gonna be also a pain um, because you're in an awkward position. I did it through the passenger, um, through the passenger side wheel there's an opening there and you'll be able to reach it from there. Um, but once you get these pipes installed uh, to put the turbo in there, uh, you will have to, you have to um, put the top one first. Um, don't put the bottom one. Put this one first with your clamp. And once, once you got this one, You'll be able to play around with it a little bit so that you can get this one in position. Um, also keep in mind that before you put your turbo in, you have to put all your hoses on. You have to put this hose right here with a 90 degree angle. And then this one too right here, it's also a 90 degree angle. And then this one, this one goes to the, to the bottom of the engine, the block. 
next to the uh, oil pressure sensor or together with the oil pressure sensor because there is a two-way splitter down there so you hook this one up um, and then there's another hose over here this one coming out of the turbo that one hooks up to the Z1 um, spacer on your oil pan hooks up right there you guys can see that um, Make sure you put all your hoses before you mount the turbo here. Once this thing is mounted, there's no way, there's no moving it. It's nice and solid. Um, then these two hoses, they go to the coolant for the turbo. So one goes here. And this one right here routes all the way to the back of the engine. And I haven't put it. I haven't put it in yet, but there's a there is a connection right there. That used to be on the. They used to connect to this right here. This one right here. The hose goes to the back. That is eliminated, and these two are eliminated, and these two are eliminated. So basically, your throttle body stays without hoses. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, you know, I'm still doing, uh, I think it's this installation and trying to do the best I can to understand how to everything connects. I guess, um, uh, tomorrow I'll be connecting the piece from the fuel rail. So be able to connect the fuel regulator hose here. Um, this right here is my um, my air ratio sensor, fuel and air ratio sensor right there. That goes to my gauges inside. Um, this installation is is it's not as easy as you think. If you're not familiarized with your engine, um, I suggest you get somebody professional to do it. But if you're a handy and you're taking your engine out, done your swaps or whatever, you'll be able to do this um, tomorrow. After putting the fuel rail and everything together, I will probably start putting the intercooler piping and the intercooler. Um, and I'll be uh, able to film that as well. I was coming along pretty good. Hopefully when I'm done, I don't have any leaks. Um, Cause that's, that's the last step right there. Once everything's together and you turn your car on, you gotta make sure that you don't have any leaks. So that, therefore your car can go in boost. So stay tuned. I'll be back with the, with the other part of the installation tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Okay, so what I had to do was put these two pipes together um, because it's gonna be probably an easier way for me to mount them. Instead of mounting one and then hooking up the other, I'm going to let you know you guys how it went. If it's easier this way, or if I had to unhook it from here, make sure you get your 10 millimeter with a nut to uh, get it secure. But I'm going to get it installed and hopefully it won't be that hard to, uh, to plug in the waste gauge right there. So I'll let you know you guys, I'll let you guys know how it went. All right, guys, um, I have um, information to give you about this inf this installation that you should know. Um, before you put this pipe right here on, which is the, the U-pipe, um, do not tighten the top that connects to the turbo. You can uh, put your uh, clamps, but don't tighten them up. Leave them loose, uh, but make sure you have an attachment. Uh, this way, the pipe that comes down from here, you're able to at least move it a bit to be able to match the uh, header, the header flank to the bottom pipe. You have to wiggle this piece until you get this pipe right here into place. And that's why you don't tighten it up 
on top in the turbo. Um, it's gonna be really uncomfortable if you tighten this pipe and this pipe on top um, because you cannot play with it to get it into place. So basically, um, you're gonna have to loosen this clamp out and also take that bolt out and lift this up and that clamp down there you gotta have to lose that one up too so make sure these are loose but overall attached so that you'll be able to move this pipe easily down there now let me take you down to show you what it looks like It's a really, really tight fit over here. Um, but before you put, before you put that clam right there, you have to get your screws on, on the, um, over there, you see it over there. You get the screws on the manifold, on the intake manifold, and your, uh, and the other side of the, uh, the other side of the, of the U bent pipe make sure you get those three screws on and you get your gasket in there before you install that clamp right there which is the other pipe under the turbo um, because you need to have like I said that play to get these to line up properly um, and do not hook up this pipe until you actually got the U pipe installed properly once you got your pipe your U pipe installed properly, um, you know, tighten your clan, and then hook up this the other part of your of your cross pipe to your intake manifold right here, and, and and you know get your screws on and everything. Make sure all that's just tight. Um, sometimes you'll see that it might light not not line up. That's why you, this pipe right here, when you pull it back, you'll be able to get this part inside on your waste gauge um, install your L fittings um, before you put it in here and connect your hose before you bolt it down to the pipe um, because uh, like I said it's a tight fit so you won't be able to do none of that when it's installed um, so go on top you throw your hose down and you pull it down through here you you put it on the on the L-shaped fitting, which you can't see because it's on the back. And once you get your fitting installed in your, your holes, there's the L-shaped fitting right there, the gold one. You go ahead and um, and put your clamp on this side so we will be able to um, get some space to tighten it down. Um, also, this pipe right here, this metal piece of pipe that comes out of the waste gauge, Install that before you put your waste gauge in because um, there's no space for you to to get everything in there and you'll be tying it on this side. You'll be tying it on this side right here. There. All that is uh, reachable from on the bottom. Um, you know, put it in there so that you can have some um, some play to move the pipe around and then you'll be able to position it where it's clearing your 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 u pipe um so right now i'm up to this point where i'm going to start putting my exhaust pipe right here to connect to my uh rear rear pipes uh, we get that installed let me show you what the holes on top looks like This holes right here, you make sure you put your, your threaded protection and I stick tight it to that hose right there because you don't want it to go to the, you don't want it to touch your intake manifold and burn up. So make sure you stick tight. It's coming from the back of the engine. That hose is gonna go into your intake manifold and um, that hose is the one connected to your waste gauge, all right? But um, the installation is coming along. I had to give a call 
to solo motorsports because uh, it can get a little confusing with the vacuums and the way they connect. If you don't have a boost controller or if you don't have um, uh, uh, breather, breathers to install on the uh, intake manifold, what they also mentioned to me is that these two inputs on your intake manifold are supposed to be cut off. You're supposed to block these. We won't be using those anymore. And these hoses right here. This hoses right here. Um, you're supposed to uh, run from this hoses to your, I believe, to your blow-off valves. So I would have a schematic on this. They will email it to me to how to run these hoses so that I don't get confused with the installation. I will share it with you guys as well. Here's a quick overview of how the hoses are run in the intake on the manifold. Um, basically, this right here gets split into two for the blow off bow. This one gets cocked off, it's just, it just gets sealed. This one right here. You put a T right here and it goes into your waste gauge, the lower bottom. And this side, which is, you know, two sides, this side also gets a T in here and you put it on your boost gauge. And um, that's basically it. Just wanted to run that by you guys. Um, this I had to get from Soho Motorsports um, to be able to get everything installed properly. And I hope you guys can um, benefit from that. All right, guys, I went ahead and connected my exhaust pipe. Um, I'm gonna put the clamp there and it runs nice and perfect to my three inch exhaust rear pipe. Continue on. I wanna put the uh, intake manifold on. Um, this is what I did. In the uh, throttle body input here, um, they sent me a diagram that I'm supposed to put a T over here, and this wired that's adding into that T is coming from your waste gauge. Um, there's a few things that won't be connecting anymore here, like. That bottom, that bottom galley right here, that little input is now no longer being used. It used to come here. This is like an L shape, so it didn't really do anything to the throttle body. It's just like a, in a, in a L shape adapted to the throttle body to keep flowing over here. So we eliminated this. Same thing in the other side. It's not being used. It's an L shape again right here. And then on this side, another T from the only input into the um, manifold over here on this side next to the throttle body, another T. This is for, um, this side is for your boost gauge, which I have. Um, and then continuing with the hoses, you were supposed to cap one of these off, seal it completely tight, and then one of these uh, is gonna have a, a hose that splits in two, and one goes to one blow off bow and then the other blow off bow on the other side. Um, this right here um, goes to your oil cash can, Together with this one right here to your oil cash can and the one that's connected to that um what should we call it? I forgot the name of this thing. Um this piece right here, these um and this one right here, that one, that one is also connected to your cash can. So you have two wires that go into your cash can. Let me show you real quick here. 
in my cash can. Should we go here? Right there. Um, one goes inside there and one here. So one there and the other one here. Same thing with the other cash can that I have over here. And that seals up all the backings on the uh, uh, intake manifold. I'm gonna proceed by installing the intercooler and crash part. Um, went ahead and uh, mounted this in there. So let me get that done. I'll get back to you guys. All right, guys. I got the intercooler installed and um, pretty much all the pipings are self-explanatory um, on how to install it. Um, I still gotta put the uh, vacuum on the blow-off valves, which takes one one host from there and one host from there. They're gonna meet up over here. And from there into a T, into uh, this host right here. Um, there's a filter that goes in the turbo mouth right here. Um, that's basically optional if you want to put it on. I'm going to put a, a net to protect the turbo from anything hitting in there. But um, yeah, this piece is, is, uh, is optional if you guys want to put it in. And the filter is over there. But um, <clears throat> everything is installed. Lower piping is installed. Um, top piping is installed. Everything is nice and tight. Um, I'm gonna finish connecting my hoses um, and my gauges. Also followed by the um, the O2 sensor, the the one that goes on the uh, air ratio, air and fuel ratio. I'm gonna connect that one as well. So minor details follow. Um, after this, I will be contact Soho Motorsports for a base map to try to get my car started. And um, I will keep you guys up to post with everything that uh, is done after that. Hopefully everything turns out fine, no leaks, and I'll be able to get this car, you know, this car into boost. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, if you're doing the same installation, um, feel free to ask me in the future. I won't do this installation with anybody because it's just very, very, very detailed. Um, you only sacrifice for your own car, basically. But um, any questions that you guys might have, um, like again, you, you, you're, you're free to ask and I'll be able to uh, answer, uh, when I can. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Good morning, guys. Uh, just about finalizing the uh, installation. This probably will be one of my last videos. Um, I am left off with my hoses. I'm basically trying to get the uh, blow off valves connected to the manifold the intake manifold so i went ahead and um ran the line one one from there goes through there and it comes up right here the other one through there goes through there it comes up right there right here it goes through here and i actually had to go to uh one of those auto parts store, I went to O'Reilly's and I had to get a T that's universal. Why? Because the the hoses that go on the blow off valves are um, thinner than the one coming out of the trial body. You can tell they're two different size of hoses. So I had to go buy this T right here. This is a universal T, as you can see. Um, you can pretty much use whatever size um, that uh, suits for your needs. So I went ahead and bought two of these. One for that part you just saw. And the other one is going to go for 
the uh, boost gauge, which is gonna be right here. As you can see, um, this is the throttle body hose. It goes from there to there. I um, added two pieces of hose and they're gonna be attaching like this. And then the other one, it's gonna come from my, um, my sensor, my boost sensor, the pressure sensor. Um, it's gonna be a small hole from here to there. Um, and we get that done, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, this is my, um, my finished work. So you notice that this hose right here is much, much smaller than these. So uh, these fittings, they work just about, just about perfect for the job. Um, Cause it's hard to find it on metal where you can have a bigger, a bigger ends right here and the smaller piece coming out. So this definitely works better than the metal ones. So, I am gonna be replacing this battery right there. This battery is from Walmart. They don't really last that long. It lasts me about a year and a half. Of course, I got I got music on my on my car. But I went ahead and bought one of these Optima. It's gonna work perfect for it. So I'll be working on next the uh, oil cash cans and get this hose situated. Um, and then I'll come back to show you what it looks like. Stay tuned. Okay, so I went ahead and installed my catch cans. Um, you're gonna have to get two different sizes of hoses for this. Uh, the one coming from the back is a thicker input, so you're gonna have to get different size of holes. Also, you know, if your catch can has different fittings, this is bigger than this one. Um, same thing on this side, same thing. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna continue assembling everything back as, as it should. Also, I wanted to mention uh, when I did this connection, I also kept, I kept this one out. That's what they want us to do on the schematic that I gave you guys in the previous video uh, make sure you do that as well it's good to get your your uh, temperature sensor also to see how how hot your your your, your engine is getting because what that is right there i got one for the oil as well it's almost coming to an end um put my battery in there I haven't connected it yet and I already showed you guys the boost pressure sensor installation as well. Um, also, there's a four four band sensor, pressure sensor for the intake manifold. Make sure you install that as well. It comes in your package as well. Don't forget that. Um, what else can I say? Again, doing these videos, if you have any, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post in the comments. Uh, this is a lot to follow, a lot to remember. Um, just take it one step by, at a time, don't rush it, um, because you need to make sure that you follow the steps, because once you have this thing in installed, if we forget something, it's very tight to go back and work on it. I can probably give you an example. Um, I don't have a cover here, but there's a cover that goes on the uh, fuel pressure line on this side. Fuel pressure line, it's like a green plastic cover. Um, I kind of left that cover out, but I, I made sure that the fuel line was pressure in and then it was not going to come out. Uh, but I realized I'm supposed to install that back in there, so I gotta look for ways to install it back in there. Um, and that's just an example that if you know if you miss something, it's just hard to go back. Your engine is gonna become a little more uncomfortable to work on 
because you know you're narrowing the space down obviously I will continue to pose as I go through I already purchased some oil some uh, power steering oil and the cooling I'm gonna get all that stuff inside and live it ready so that when I'm ready to turn it on it'll be all complete again place your uh, questions in the comments and uh, continue watching